Here are some salient points from the book Mindfulness, Where It Comes From and What It Means by Sarah Shaw. When we study the history of the word mindfulness, we see it carries many dimensions that seem to have been lost in modern usage of the word, including memory, non-attachment, attentive friendliness, and equanimity. Mindfulness is also about recognizing that you've been capable of equanimity in the past and that you're capable of reproducing it in the future. Equanimity is not a denial of feelings, but an imperturbability untroubled by cravings or rejection of events. Awareness is not a product of mindfulness, but a precursor to it. Mindfulness is also the recognition of unwholesome states as threatening to our well-being and the wisdom and effort to rectify these. It's crucial in mindfulness practice to be aware of the five bodily senses and treat them as gates. In this sense, mindfulness acts as the gatekeeper, disarming environmental stimuli of their ability to evoke emotional responses before entering our experience. The Buddha encouraged people with many commitments and busy lives to use means of repetition and reminders to practice mindfulness. Traditionally, mindfulness meditation can be a deliberate awareness of specific things. Mindfulness of death, mindfulness of body, mindfulness of the breath, and mindfulness of peace. There are five faculties of meditation, faith, vigor, mindfulness, concentration, and wisdom. In Buddhism, there are five hindrances to meditation, sense desire, ill will, restlessness, depression, and doubt. Hindrances of mindfulness come from outside as visitors, not from within. The Buddhist path is something to be uncovered as much as developed. There is a liberating idea that if we can find mindful awareness, even for a moment, we can manage more. Traditionally, mindfulness was to the practitioner, a background presence to sense, advert to, and feel behind the difficulties of conventional daily life, a space in which difficulties can be resolved. We can shine our mindfulness to illuminate specific areas and build specific skills. We are often told to view our thoughts non-judgmentally, but this is a bit unrealistic. Buddhist traditions provide a more practical prescription of not having excessive or inappropriate judgment about a particular thought or experience. We can have ethical preferences and views and incorporate them into our mindfulness practice. It's not that we need to be indifferent to everything. Mindfulness is compatible with a busy daily life. It teaches us to be aware of where we are, what we are doing now, and what we will be doing soon, all of which are useful perceptions for performance. Mindfulness is a little like an ongoing irrigation system, washing through the mind, ensuring that dirt and blockages do not obstruct perceptions of the world, emptying the mind of views, opinions, and stale ways of looking at the world. For a robust and curated collection of other book recommendations inspired by mindfulness, stoicism, and personal growth, head over to mindfulstoic.net slash books.